All right, if you remember, we've been looking at uh, the, the uh, what are called the property plots and the property tables. We started with the temperature volume one. Uh, there are a couple others. There's a couple flavors of these of these uh, of these tables, uh, and they 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 well they kind of look the same. The most important feature, as we've seen, is what we call the saturation dome. That tells us just uh, not only what uh, what the makeup of our fluid is in the system, and this works. This this is just a uh, table, a characteristic of the water itself. It doesn't matter if we have a closed system, an open system, steady state, steady flow, or any of those. None of that matters. This is the characteristics of water as a fluid. Uh, well, we also have it for other substances in the tables. We also have it for uh, uh, refrigerant, R134, and uh, I forget offhand if there, there might be ammonia tables in there. Any, any, any substance that can easily be used in uh, two phases, uh, these tables are available for and very well known. So we uh, ran those couple experiments where we imagined constant pressure processes, if you remember. And in fact, that's how we got the dome. Remember, that's our symbol for a line of constant pressure. So uh, we're looking at, in some detail at uh, different parts of this. So this, this is just review to get ready to do a couple problems as we go through. The companion to these, these, this simple, our, our first cut at these property plots is the pressure volume uh, plot. Also has a dome, however the lines of constant temperature tend to go like that instead, but then uh, basically everything else is the same. So those are the those are the plots we have right now. We'll introduce other plots as we get other needs for them. For instance, uh, we did introduce on Wednesday the property enthalpy. Remember uh, our symbol for that H. Remember our definition for that because it's really just a matter of convenience. It's, it's the fact that two variables are very often seen together, so it's a lot easier to throw them together and call them one. Remember what the definition of enthalpy was? Yeah, internal energy plus this one term that came to us because uh, of the flow work done in pushing the fluid through uh, some kind of control volume. If we have a closed system, of course, it still has pressure and volume uh, quantities. It's just that those don't really change for a, for a uh, closed system necessarily. So we're, we're more concerned with you when we're talking about closed system. But we do have that quantity there for any system uh, that we want. And typical units, especially here for us, uh, contrary on the SI system, is the kilojoules per kilogram. So we'll see that in some detail uh, as, we, as we get going through this. So, <coughs> excuse me, on Wednesday, step through a little bit of how to pull some things out of the tables, just to get used to figuring out some volume, uh, uh, figure out some values using these these tables and using E's. Uh, and one of, one of the problems was just to fill out a table of different state points. Um, now we'll do very much that type of thing as we start doing some problems. So what we're going to look at today is uh, two problems and I'll step you through all of the 
thinking that goes with using these property tables. And then, uh, since I presume we'll have some time at the end, be able to show you how to do this on ease, including doing property plots, because those are also available in ease, and you can print those out, and actually print the state point right on the property plot as part of the solution. So that will be very useful. So here's the first problem we'll do. Again, we're talking about processes, which means we start at one place, something happens, we end at something else, at some other state point, and we need to use what's given here to help us. So we have a 25 uh, sorry, 2.5 cubic meter tank in which we have 5 kilograms of water at 75 degrees C. Now, we don't necessarily know what the state of that water is in terms of is there liquid and vapor? Is that all liquid? Uh, none of that's given. However, uh, enough information is there to find out what's what. So the initial conditions, what was that, 75 degrees C. Actually, I shouldn't be writing this down because you have it up there. So this is just for people who didn't bother to come to class. So I shouldn't be writing this down, should I? I would. Yeah. So we'll cover it. Let's go. Uh, so these are the initial conditions, we can label that one, and it's uh, heated until vaporized. Now, we need to learn as we go through these what we've been told, what we have to assume to finish these problems. We need to find the final temperature and pressure. So we'll call those 2, P2, and T2. Remember, under the dome, those are not independent. So if we can establish what state point 2 is, uh, we may uh, instantly know those. Otherwise, we may need to look them up a little bit to see what's going on. All right. There's the deal. So let's see. Uh, we're given temperature and something about volume, so it probably will make sense for us to follow this along on a TV diagram and try to figure out where we are, what information is given us that is going to tell us enough that we can go into the tables, figure out where the first point is, where the second point is specifically because we need to find those that temperature and pressure. Generally, not generally, uh, perhaps most often, as we go through these processes, something is constant in the pro during the process that will help us establish the general direction of the process, even give us more information to then finish the problem. And you can only tell what it is from the reading. So in this process, there's enough word, in this problem, there's enough wording there to tell us what is constant in this process, if anything, this heating process we're undergoing. Pressure. Pressure is not constant in this process. <coughs> what? Volume. Volume is, by virtue of what single word? Rigid, rigid. rigid container. The fact that we have a rigid container means that... Uh, one, it's a closed system process. The walls do not move. The container does not change, change, change size or shape in any way. So we can then assume it's a constant pressure, or sorry, constant volume process. By the way, that's known as an isochoric process. I'm not sure where, where it comes from. Also, I believe an isometric process is, is constant volume. Um, or you can just say constant volume because that works too. 
do we have enough information to figure out where that first state point is? We know what the temperature is, so somewhere along the line of 75 degrees, we know our first state point lies, but we need to know more than that. If we could find the volume, we could place the state point, we'd know just where we are, and we could start looking up any other values we might need, if any. Remember to fix the state point. We need what? To what? Independent Two intensive. independent intensive properties. Now temperature and pressure are intensive, but under the dome they're not independent. So if we're under the dome, we may need more information as we go through here. So what other intensive property? We've got T, we've already plotted that line. What other property we have that will allow us to fix the state point? We have the specific volume. Remember, this plot is specific volume. We're given here the actual volume, but it's easy to relate the two. Um, 2.5 meters cubed per 5 kilograms. So we know that the specific volume is 0.5. Now, that does not mean yet we know where we are along here. We could be over here. Remember what this region to the left of the dome is called? Is what? I think you have it. Subcool. Yeah, subcool uh, or compressed liquid, or you can just say liquid. Um, though under the dome we can have some liquid. Outside to the left of the dome, it's all liquid. Under the dome, we have a phase mixture of both liquid and vapor. And to the right of the dome, we're in, remember that region? Superheated vapor. Uh, no possibility of any of the liquid state of water outside of the dome in that region. So we don't know where we are along this line. And since our just sketch here, uh, we don't know where those plots are, so we have to figure that out. The way to figure that out is to go then to the property tables. And we have a lot of them, so we need to figure out which one to, uh, which one to work with. You know, Paul, if you don't mind, I'm just going to take the whole dang thing apart. I hope it doesn't fall off my table. Oh man. Oh that's not yours, that's mine. Okay. So we've got a lot of choices. We have temperature, so it makes sense we go to the temperature table. What we need to do first is figure out are we under the dome? So that is the saturated water temperature table. Remember, saturated water means that we're either on the dome or under it. So we need table A4, so we go to Paul's book, rip it apart, and go to table A4, saturated water, temperature table, and we go down to 75 degrees. Doesn't hurt if you have a ruler here to help you with this stuff. Okay, so we go down to 75 degrees. Try to leave the column heading there because we, we're still not sure we're on this table. This is just where we start looking around. First thing to look at. We have the 75 degrees. The first thing to look at is this specific volume because we have that, volume, that value for this state point. So we look to see is our uh, 0.5 between VF, the vo specific volume of the fluid, the liquid, I don't know why they don't use it yet, an L, they use an F, or the vapor, I don't know why they use a V, they use a G. So the fluid and the gas, and you can see that we are indeed between there. In fact, uh, it looks like we're, we're kind of 
far over, but we're not sure yet exactly where. We do know that we're under the dome now because that value is on the table as VG, and this value is on the table as VF, and our value is between those two. So that tells us that we're on the we're under the dome and that this is indeed the right table to use. That gives us uh, the pressure now, because that's the saturated pressure value that's right there, 38.6. However, this isn't a constant pressure process. As this liquid vaporizes, the volume increases a lot, the pressure is going to increase a lot. So it's not a constant pressure process, but we don't need that information anyway. All right, so we've established our first state point. We also know the process is a constant volume process. So we can draw our process line. Our state point's there. We know that it's going to go along that line, uh, at a, along the line of constant volume. We just don't know how far. That's the next thing we need to do because we need to fix the second state point if we want to then find the temperature and the pressure. What's the second intensity variable we know for the second state point? We know the volume because the volume doesn't change. We go from state point one to state point two, but we don't know where that is. We need one more intensive thermodynamic variable to fix that state point. And what is that point? Any idea? This is a, a little bit more subtle. It's in the wording of the problem. Let me put the problem back up. Until vaporized. What that means to us is we heat it just to the point the last of the liquid disappears, but not any farther. So what then is the sec where then is the second state point? It's right on the dome. We heat this until it's all vaporized and no farther. If we went any farther, we're superheating the vapor, and that's not what the problem said we did. It just said until vaporized. So there's state point two, and now we can go back to the tables and see what we can make of that. Now we know that this, this uh, value, V2, equal 0.5 meters cubed per kilogram, which is the same specific volume we started with because it's a constant volume process. Constant volume, constant mass, so the specific volume can't change. We now know, though, that this specific volume at state point two is also Vg for that uh, temperature and pressure, whatever that temperature is. We're looking for that. We need to find T2. We don't know what it is yet. We also need to find P2, but remember that goes with it right under there. So we need to go down the table until we find a VG. That's this whole column here. We need to go down the table VG until we find 0.5 or as close as we can get to it. So it looks like uh, we're a little bit the 140.508. That's 
very little difference, I'd take that. Uh, if, you, if we needed greater accuracy, we know we're between that one and the one below it, and we could interpolate between the two. So I'll show you how we can do that. We've got these two values, 140 degrees and 145 degrees. So that's the temperature. I'm just looking at these, these two because we know our VF is right in between those two. And so VF is uh, 5, 0, what is it? Uh, 9. We'll round off a little bit. Uh, because what we're going to do is make an estimate anyway in 4, 4, 6. We know that we're between those two with our 0.5. A little bit closer to the top one, the bottom one. What we do then with the tables, if we need more accuracy than just saying, well, that 140 is pretty darn close. If we needed more accuracy, we assume if we're this amount between these two values, then we're that same proportion between these two values. So you just figure out the percentage difference you know, whatever percent we are along here, and figure the same percent along there. So we could say something simply like uh, uh, the whole interval is that, and we're at some portion, not 05, 0.5, we're at some portion along the way. What's that fraction come out to be? Some people had their calculators out, but they wouldn't move. They made you get yours out. And Taylor said, oh, wait, somebody will do it. Phil's got his calculator right there and won't help any of us. Is, is, what? So we're, 85, 86% of the way from here up to here, we assume we're that same percentage along there. So what was this, 86? And it's an estimate. It's, it's uh, even though all these lines are curved a little bit, we're just taking those two points, the 140 and 145, and assuming it's a linear interpolation between the two. So 86% of the way along here. Be careful because the temperature is going up as we go down, but the volume is going down as we go down. So make sure you, you're getting these right 86% along. What's 86% of 5 degrees? 4.3. 4 so we, 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 since this is 86% of the way up to the next number, we assume we're also 86% of the way up, even though we're going down in temperature. So just be careful with that. And so that comes out to be what, what 144 with change. 140.7. Oh, 140, yeah, 140.7. So, so the 140 is plenty good enough. If I were, if I were you doing this, I'd see that's so darn close to the 0.5, uh, I'll just live with that. But don't assume that works on every problem. So the answer then to the question, what's the temperature and the pressure of state 2, what's the answer? 140, 140.7, 141, whatever you want to call it, it's awful darn close. And the pressure? Yeah, you have to again look at the table, remember under the dome, and we're not under the dome, but we're on the dome, and that's really what these points are, is the edges of the dome when we figure out everything in between. The saturated pressure, we could be just uh, just above 361.5, maybe 362, 363. That's close enough.
get used to these tables. Now, I'll try on tests to have the answers hit nice points like this so you're not wasting time uh, trying to do a lot of interpolating, which is just an algebra problem, not a thermodynamics problem. It's a skill you need, but it's, it, there's other stuff to look at on the tests. So I'll try to have them right spot on on the points. Probably also have a take home problem that's an ease problem, just so you can do that and do that at, at more at your leisure. Is that in uh, the The pressure? Yep. Kilopascals. All right. Questions on, on that problem? Very few words, but all the words you needed were there to find the endpoints and the process itself. And that'll be the case for all of these problems. But as you're hopefully getting the idea, it is a, a bit subtle at times. There's a lot to learn. Okay, so if you're ready, we'll do another one and uh, go through the so thought process with this one too. Remember, we got to figure out where we are at all times in relation to the dome so that we can uh, figure out what, this, what the state points are to answer the question of what the rest of the properties are. Okay, so here's the second problem, a piston cylinder device. So we, you've, uh, you've seen these a couple times. Cylinder with one of our massless, non-binding, non-leaking pistons in it. Holds water with 0 .5, uh, 0 0.1 liquid and 0.9 vapors by ball volume. So, We got liquid and vapor together, and of the total volume, the, uh, the liquid is 0.1 meters cubed, and the gas is 0.9 meters cubed. And that's at Eight hundred kilopascals. That system is then heated to a temperature of three fifty. And we need to find the initial temperature, T1, the total mass of the system, says the mass of the water, that does not mean liquid, that means the liquid and vapor, because they're both water. And we need to find the final volume, because that, uh, that piston is going to rise. As, uh, as the uh, more the liquid is vaporized, the piston's going to rise. There'll be a second volume that we'll finish with. Is anything, and if so, what? Is anything constant during this process? Pressure. Remember, this is very much like the uh, experiment we did, the Gedanken we did on Wednesday that helped us uh, start to establish these plots. So it might help us to look at the PV diagram. We know that we're in a constant pressure process. When I hear piston cylinder, though, I don't think constant pressure. Well, you need to now. Don't come in here with your prejudices and, and then defend them. No, that's what, remember the, the piston yeah. okay. 
keeps this a closed system. If we didn't have that on top, it'd still be a constant pressure process, but we'd be losing mass. What we need to make sure is that this is saturated water vapor, not a water vapor air mix. Because that's a, that's a different process, that's a different problem. So this is a constant pressure process. Again, we're just not sure where we are, uh, where we fall with this, this particular process, so we have to establish, uh, establish our points. All right, we, we have the most information about volume, so it's most likely that we want that to be our, uh, uh, our starting point, to start trying to figure out things, figure out as much as we can. For example, if we could figure out the uh, specific volume, we know right where we are along that line. Are we under the dome with point one? Now that's always one of the things, because that tells you which table to use. Are we under the dome? Yeah. Why? Yeah, we, we must be under the dome because we have a liquid vapor mix. So what that uh, allows us to do, we know we're under the dome somewhere, what that allows us to do is figure out what the specific volume is. Remember, that'll be uh, Vf plus the quality V times Vfg. Remember what the quality is? That's percentage of gas vapor over total mass. That's that's the mass of vapor over the total mass, the percentage of the mixture that is on a mass percent, the percentage of this vapor. Do we know what that is? No. We know the volume ratio, we don't know the mass ratio, that's what we need. So we need to find out uh, we need to find out what these values are and uh, figure out what else we can do with it. So the, uh, we do know that the specific volume of the gas at that pressure, now that's this point specifically. Sorry, not the, not the gas, uh, oh it's okay. That's the gas side. That's VG, this is VF. Remember, those values were established where we found the, uh, the pressure, constant pressure line turned in our Gedanken on Wednesday. And that's defined as the um, amount of gas by mass, sorry, the volume of the gas divided by the mass of the gas. That is this value, Vg. The nice thing is, that's in the table. We can look this value up. We were given that value. We can find out how much of the, how much the vapor weighs, and then we can do the same thing with the liquid phase, and then the two of them together will be the total mass. So we'll have one part of that knocked out. All we have to do is find out what VG is and find out what VF is at 800 kilopascals. So that means we'll do the saturated water, because that's the problem. Saturated, we already know we're under the dome, and we have pressure as our given value, so we'll go to the pressure table. That's A5. So open your book to A5, comes on a couple pages, and again, we're looking for 800 kilopascals.
All right, well, this goes down to 750, so it's got to be the next sheet, the next page. And there it is, almost right at the top. Vf and there's Vg, which then allows us to find Mg and Mf because we were given the other pieces in the problem. So Vg is 2269. Um, and that's Oh, I'm sorry. Why did I get the 850? Uh, I guess because I read the 7. 24, 2404, we'll call it. And that's meters cubed per kilogram. And VF is 0011, 0011, we'll call it. So we can use those then, since we know the total volume of the gas, the total volume of the liquid, now we know the ratio of the volume to the mass, we can then solve for the mass of each. So Mg just comes out to be about 3.73 kilograms, and Mf comes out to be about uh, 90, 90.9 kilograms. So the ratio of the volumes is not the same as the ratio of the masses. So be careful with that, as tempting as it may have been. So now we know the total mass of the system, uh, a little over 34 or 94 kilograms. We know that one now. Remember, that's all hinged on assuming whatever liquid is in the system is at the liquid edge of the dome, saturated liquid. Whatever vapor there is, is at the dome on the right side, saturated vapor, even though our system is somewhere in between when you take the two together. And what we still don't know yet is where we are along this line. We need some other value. We've got the pressure, but we don't know where we are along this line. Well, we do know now the temperature, don't we? Since we're under the dome, once you know the pressure, you know the temperature. Now that we've looked that up, there's the temperature right there, the 170.4. So that's easy to, to look up. We've got that right there. But we still can't fix state point one because we have the pressure is given. Now we know the temperature, but they're not independent under the dome. We need another independent intensive property at state point one before we can fix state point one. We can now find the quality. You can either use these numbers and solve for x, or you can use the uh, the fact that we now know the masses directly. So remember it's Mg over Mf plus Mg. So it just makes sense to use those values to figure out what the quality is. Since that's how quality is defined and we have those values. Comes out to be about 4%, 0.04. Which puts us pretty far 
pretty far over here somewhere. We're not sure exactly where, but this is just a sketch to give us an idea of what we're doing. I'll show you how to plot it uh, using ease right on property plots in a minute. And we go through the process as a constant pressure process. So we know that we continue this way. Since we're heating, we know we're going to go that way. <laughs> oh dang, look who's here. Didn't you realize we're going to tape it? Yes, but no one has to into it. Okay, now I'll start the taper. <laughs> We're almost done. I know. <laughs> I wouldn't have come in if I was at home in my pajamas. Where? Where? I was home in my pajamas. You're here. But I had to get up and sober up my wife and get her into work. <laughs> All right. So we don't know where we are for state point two. We need that to find the volume which we're going to get from the specific volume. Uh, if we find the state point two, we can get the specific volume. We can use that with the mass to find out what the total volume is. Uh, so we need something else. We know that it's heated to 900 or to 350 degrees. <coughs> it may be that the temperature and the pressure are independent and can serve as the two independent intensive properties. What must be true for that to be the case though? Because we do know the pressure and we do know the temperature. Is that enough to fix the state point? It is if what is true. We're not under the dome anymore. Under the dome these are not independent. Well, we know we're not at that temperature, which was the temperature under the dome. We're at a much higher temperature, which means we're outside the dome and we're into superheat somewhere. So there's state point two. Remember the temperature lines do something like this. So there's a 350 degree line that goes right through there and we can fix state point two then. So we know state point two. If we can find the specific volume at that state, we can then use that with the mass to find the total volume of the system to find out how far that piston's moved. So we go back to Paul's tables getting chalk all over them, but it's kind of like uh, kind of like they're being blessed by my presence. Uh, now we need to go to the superheat tables. Remember, make sure it's the right liquid because there's refrigerants, there's uh, we've got gases, kind of like all kinds of stuff. Um, superheated water tables, table A6. <laughs> Superheated water tables. So here's the first one. Now these are different tables. These are set up differently because pressure and temperature are independent outside of the dome. So we have to figure out where we are. We know we're at 800 kilopascals. We know we're at 350 degrees. So we just try to figure out what we got that works with that. Uh, 800 kilopascals is 0.8 megapascals. Notice this table's in megapascals. And we're at 0.8. So there's 0.1, there's 0.5, so we're between these two tables. Which kind of sucks because we will probably have to interpolate between the two. And the temperature is 350. So this 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 double sucks is the the term here for this because 
Uh, here's, here's the deal with this. By pressure, we know we're between these two tables. By temperature, we know we, we're between these two lines. So we're somewhere in the little square that those two make. Remember, we're trying to find the volume. So we have that value and that value, and that value and that value, and we're between, somewhere between the square that those two make up. So it kind of sucks, but uh, the easy one to start with is the 350, because that puts us halfway between those. What? Did you mean to say 0.08 or 0.8? I said 0 0.8. Yeah, so oh, yeah, so I was looking at 0.08. There we go. Ah, this undouble sucks. Now it only single sucks. Because there is a 0 0.8 table. And there's a 350. Oh, you guys get it so easy. This doesn't even have any suckage to it now. God dang, you guys are lucky. See, when students come in, I get rattled. When students come in late, I get all messed up. It's not my fault. All right, so there's, there's our specific volume right there, V2, V2 is 3544, that's meters cubed per kilogram, and that's the volume at that state point we want divided by the total mass. And we have the total mass from just adding these two together. It's a closed system. And so we can solve for the total volume there. Yep. How did, how did we know definitively to begin with that it was going to be outside the dome? Because we, uh, we knew what the temperature was under the dome for this pressure. And it's a constant pressure process. Since our temperature given this was given in part of the problem, is way over that, we know we're in superheat. In fact, that's the, where the phrase comes from, because we're way much more than saturated temperature, it's superheated vapor. But that, that temperature was with liquid still in No. Right. No, it, it can't be. What? Why, why is there still liquid here? It's additional temperature, right? No, no, so heated to 350 degrees. We started at, well, we didn't know what the temperature is until we found it. Right, 170 was your initial temperature. Yeah, and when it's heated to 350. Right, and I'm asking, that tells how you, you know have, that temperature difference is going to get rid of all your liquid. It's got to, because the temperature stays the same until we reach the dome, and all the liquid's now gone. Only then does the temperature start to rise, once we're outside of the dome. Going oh, yeah. from here, okay. I got you. boiling off liquid does nothing to the temperature. Right. It's like it just boils off the liquid. Okay. That's what all the heat's doing. Now that we know we're above saturation temperature, that fact right there tells us we're in superheat. Okay, so uh, this comes out to be, so the, the volume comes out to be 33 and a half meters cubed up a bit from the one meter cube we started with. So the volume increased by 33 times. Okay with that one? Now this is easier to do on E's because E's will look up the tables for you and do any interpolating that needs to be done. So if you're, uh, if you're ready, I'll give you a second to make sure you get all those down uh, and we'll do the very same problems on E's. With E's. <laughs> We don't need this archaic method anymore. I still have a question. 
imagine. What did we use X for? What did we use it for? Yeah. X, the, remember what X stands for? We don't call it X, quality. it's quality. The quality tells us where along this line we are. Lines of constant quality go something like this. So we knew we had to find out X so that we could figure out what the state point was. That's the line of 4% quality. And it was those two crossing, that plus the pressure line crossing, that established that point for us. Once we had that point, uh, well, we didn't need it. We could have found V1. So we didn't use it. But we didn't need V1. Okay. Actually, V1 we could have gotten once we knew the mass because we also knew the original volume. So we could have found V1 if we wanted to, once we found that total mass. But once we had the percent, then, uh, then that established our state point. Well, I don't think uh, we only needed the mass. We didn't need to establish the state point any more than that, so we just never got to it. Because that is automatically determined once you're under the dome. Once you know the pressure, you know the temperature under the dome. So we didn't find that, but we could. Okay. Now we'll do uh, an abbreviated version of those same problems on EMEs. But I'll also show you how to actually make these process plots. So we'll, we'll go through the first one kind of quickly just to remind ourselves how to, how to do it. There it is. So we'll go through this first one kind of quickly. You've all got it. So cut to ease. There we go. Oh, let me set the display. Big enough for people at the back of the room. There we go. And uh, for these two problems, I've got full ease solutions that I'll post on Angel so you can pull them up. You can just pay attention to what I'm doing. You don't have to take notes uh, as we go through these. And the first one we'll, we'll set up in some detail. The second one we'll probably just put the values in and, and uh, just double checking how to do it. So in this one, we know the volume. Since we uh, often use little v for specific volume, it's not good enough, remember, to use big V for total volume because ease doesn't distinguish between capital and lowercase letters. So we'll just call it ball 0.25 meters cubed. Everybody can see that all right? Um, and that, remember, it, it was a rigid tank. The mass, 5 kilograms. Now, uh, for plotting purposes, to plot these points, we need to do that as an array. And we talked about how to do an array on Wednesday. Remember, you need to uh, give it an indice. And we do that with square brackets and then a number. And so the specific volume is the total volume divided by the mass. There. So any points we want to plot, they need to be done as an array plot. That also puts them in the table. You may or may not want other values in the table, but to plot any points, you need them in the table. So uh, um, heat it until it is vaporized, and if you remember, then uh, uh, that told us that the quality was uh, that that put us right at the dome. That's the wrong chart. What did that chart look like? 
problem one. We'll leave that there for problem two. Problem one. We did on a TV diagram, not a PV diagram, and um, it looked something like this. We started here and went up to there. Okay, so we know the specific volume now. Um, we just found the specific volume, but remember we don't know where we are. But we can use ease to figure out what that is by calculating the quality at point one. And we do that by doing a function call. Water, uh, using the values that we happen to know. We know the specific volume. So we'll use that as a part of the call to the, the, uh, the function. What else do we know? Oh, we know the temperature is, is the 75 degrees. Just didn't put that in yet. So we'll go put that in. Equal 75 <coughs> degrees centigrade. Okay. So let's uh, forget that for a second. We don't know whether we're under the dome. Remember, that was the first step in the problem. It was very easy for us. We had this specific volume, and we were able to look up, was it between VF and VG? We don't know that uh, yet with ease. Uh, not necessarily that we need to know it, but we can check it very easily by just running this and see what ease says. And we do it, we had a units problem but we're just checking for the quality. Where's the array table? There, there's the array table. Okay, so it tells us we are indeed under the dome as we knew we were. Because that is between zero and one. Okay, so we can use that. We've got uh, a units problem somewhere. Yeah, we didn't have units on the, that specific volume yet. So we'll put that in. Okay, so that sets state point one for us. We now know the temperature and we know the quality. That fixes the state point for us. Temperature and pressure is not adequate under the dome, but temperature and quality are most certainly uh, adequate. Okay, and we want to find the final temperature and pressure. So we need to establish state point two. Remember how we did that in problem one? It was in a rigid container, it was a constant volume process. So we just say that the volume does not change. V2 equals V1. Constant pressure process. And we can put a um, comment there for us. Isobaric process. Uh, yeah, isochoric. Isochoric process. Okay. All right. And do we have enough now to establish state point two? We've got the volume. What else did we have? Fix state point two. And how do we put that into ease? Remember first it's just heated to uh, vaporization. Yeah, it said heated to vaporization. So it takes us right to the top of the dome. So that means we know the quality at state point two. It is one. So we put that in. All right, now we know uh, state point two, and we were told to find the final temperature and pressure. So now we can find T2 temperature of water at a 
known specific volume, V2. I like to put spaces in there, it makes it an awful lot more readable. And we know the quality is of what, was, what we had at X2. So there's our two independent properties that allows us to make the temperature call. Temperature and pressure are not independent under the dome, but we can still find out what that pressure is by just making uh, the ease call. And I'll just copy this tail stuff here. Less chance of making an error. Double check we've got units on everything. Nope, not on the pressure. Kilopascals. Units on quality? No. Nothing. We use it as the fractional form of percent. Check equations. Nine equations, nine variables. Woohoo! That's what we say. All of them together. Woohoo! And we check units. F8. Ha ha. Real woohoo. And so now we can solve. So that's just the given things, the calculated things I had with indices that puts them in the array table. And there's our array table. I didn't look up the pressure. I didn't need to. I wasn't asked to. You can put it in if you want because it's right there. What we mostly need, though, is the temperature and the volume of both points so we can fix them on the process. And we've got both of those, so we can now plot that on a property plot. Okay, with the solution so far, before I go to the plotting? Okay, so we go to plots, property plot. There's a ton of properties in here, way more than we have in the book. So we'll make it easy on ourselves, we'll go down to water. We want a TV plot, temperature volume plot. Uh, gives us some choices. We know the pressure is going to be a little less than 400 at point 0.2. So it might be nice to have a line that's a pressure 400. So we can change these values however we want. Uh, turns out the first pressure is down around 40 kilopascals or something. I just know that from having run it before, so I'll put in lines like that and we'll skip any other lines so we just uncheck them. You don't even know what S stands for yet, so we'll uncheck those. And we have the option of showing lines of constant quality. That's just uh, helpful, kind of instructs it, it displays it a little bit better. And there's the property plot for our problem. Notice the points themselves are not there yet. We haven't told it to do that. And we might want to change things a little bit just so they display somewhat better. We didn't need all that extra height up there. We probably don't need all this extra height here. Remember our volume was at about a half. So there's the property plot. Uh, uh, plot for water. Here's the lines of constant volume. It even labels them, but they do slip a little bit, so be careful with that. You can just move them. Oh, the wrong one. There we go. Lines of uh, constant quality. And what was our quality on this one? Did we have that? I forget. Offhand. Oh, it's in there. It was. Uh, about 12.12. So we're, we're a little bit above this line, and it happens to be a little bit above the 40. All right, that's just the property plot. Now we need to put these two points on there that we've now found. We can do that because they're in the array table. We can plot any values on, that are in the array table. Go to plots, Overlay plot. We have a plot already. We want to overlay new information on an overlay plot. Over here, we have to make sure that arrays table is selected. 
There might be more than one arrays table. We only have one, so that's not a problem. On the x-axis, we want V. On the y-axis, we want T. We want to give it a thicker line and a better dot and blue, because water's blue. Two other choices you should also make. One is update automatically. This means if we go change any of the values, run it again, it'll replot the points with the new values, which we sometimes do. The other is to show the array indices. What that tells us to do is put the one and the two on the dots where they belong, which is going to be very useful when we don't necessarily know which direction the process are going, and we're going to have multiple process processes coming up in a couple weeks. So we got everything checked, we click OK, and there's our process. And it looks just like what we knew it was going to. Simple as that. Now, when you go to print, we don't want the equations, we want the formatted equations. We don't need the solution. Remember, everything that was calculated was in the arrays. The only thing in the solution window was that those two things we were given, the mass and the volume. So in this problem, they're not in any use. Print and color. Always have color on your graphs when graphing for me. Always. Uh, it's up to you. And then preview. And there's the array table. You could do the pressure if you wanted. It wasn't asked for. We didn't necessarily need it. And then there's the plot. Like that. And you can print it out. Okay? That was worth a trip in. Gosh, yeah. I tell you. Yes. yes, sir. No, I'll, I'll, I'll put this full solution uh, on, on ease. I mean, on, on Angel. Um, for, the, for the other problem, what we can do is just real quick, we just put the values in and uh, do the same thing. We don't have to recalculate any of those. We went through those. Um, we're going to do a pressure volume plot, so we know we need what those two are. Remember, this was a constant pressure process. P1 was given as 800 kilopascals, and P1 and P2 were equal. Right, so there's our isobaric process, and then we figured out that the specific volume was, I guess I don't have it written down. What, what was it? Did we calculate the specific volume? Remember, that's this process. Did we actually have V2? That's What? Okay, what was it? 0.3544. V, V, uh, and, and we had V1 as well? No, we don't know that. Okay. Well, we can, we can, uh, I think we can plot with the other things we did know. Um, we knew T, we knew uh, T1. I don't, I don't know offhand if we can actually plot these. What was T1? 170.4. Because we're going to use a TV plot. And I don't know if we have to have those. But we can call them. If we don't have them, we'll just use these to call them because we have, the, we have everything <laughs> fixed. <laughs> what? <laughs> hey, what happened? That's awesome. Oh, see, that's a happy world, man. Steve, what'd you do? You're in charge of the projector. <laughs> 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 
some of you, some of you kind of look at the world that way anyway. Alan, I know you're one of them. I do, certainly. I look at it through rose-colored glasses. I don't see any difference with them. Though. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. I have a question for you, though. What? Uh, back when we were sort of interpolating between values on this table, uh -huh. um, I'm wondering if we can do that for a specific value, too, when you know the temperature, if we know the ratio of the Not the... No, you need the specific volumes right. to find. But if we have, say, if we have the volume, the volume is specific the volume of vapor to lift. Like say in the last problem, ninety yeah. percent. You're saying volume. Do you mean? Do you mean volume or specific volume? You said we have the volume. But in the last problem, we were given mm -hmm. 0.9 cubic meters mm -hmm. of, of vapor mm -hmm. versus 0 0.1 cubic meters. I see you're trying. To Yes, I am. Okay. As, as usual. We know the temperature, 170 yes. degrees. What's your question? Can we interpolate using that 90% ratio? No. Between? No. There's my answer. Volume. There's my answer. No. no. You, you cannot. No. Yes, I do. It's because, it's because of the... You interpolate with quality. Quality is not a volume ratio. It's a mass ratio. And I showed... We calculated the volume, and the volume ratio was 30 times. The volume ratio is only 9 times. So no, you cannot interpolate with the volume. You interpolate with the quality, which comes from the mass, not the volume. Okay? Okay. Okay. Put your rose-colored glasses back on now. I'm looking at you through mine. All right, so we're doing now a PV plot of water. You don't need the specific volumes. We can change the temperature lines if you want. You can even put grid lines on all kinds of stuff, and there's what the plot looks like. Something like that. So we need the... Uh, the volumes, so we can plot those. V1 was, did we have that? Didn't have that, actually, you're right. Okay, well, I'll give this, I'll, I'll just put this one up, this whole one. This is, there's a lot of stuff to type in before we get V in. And it, but uh, we know about what it's going to look like. It was a constant pressure process. And you see that it did indeed come out of the dome in the superheat. And ah, we have one minute before I have to release you. Any other questions? 